the warfare that is raging for the truth and for the right when the conflict fears is raging with the powers of the night God needs soldiers who are brave and true. May them depend on you. May the Lord depend on you. So loyalty is what is due. Say, oh spirit, brave and true. May them depend on you. The song goes like this. In the warfare that is raging for the truth and for the right. When the conflict fears is raging with the power. Soldiers comes to one and all. Soldiers of the conflict. Will you hit that call? Will you answer quickly? With a ready chair. Will you be enlisted as a volunteer? A volunteer for Jesus. A soldier. All that have enlisted. So why not you? Jesus is a captain. We will never fail. So will you? be enlisted as a volunteer. I'm sure you remember that song. A call for lawyers, so just come to one and all. So just for the conflict, will you hear the call? Will you answer quickly with a ready chair? God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is your friend in the School of Prayer and Deliverance, Daniel Lulukoya. You are most warmly welcome to the Revival Hour. An hour for those who have dogged determination to make heaven. An hour for those who want the power of God to touch their lives. An hour for those who want to move in a new way in the realm of the Spirit. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another revival hour. We thank you for your grace, your love, your might and power. We thank you for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the mightiness of your name and your power. And we thank you for your name which is above all names. Father, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Father, we are gathered before you, open our understanding. Lay your hands upon us by the power of the God of Elijah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Today in our revival hour, we're going to listen to this message which has blessed many lives. God bless you in Jesus' name. Tonight, we're speaking and praying about what I call the covenant that kill it. The covenant that killeth. The covenant that killeth. Amen. There are eight ways in which a person's freedom can be taken away. There are eight ways in which a person's freedom can be taken away or restricted or restrained. Number one, by spiritual power. Power is the ability to get done whatever you wish done, even in the face of opposition. That's power. 
power is to remove obstacles in your way to achieve a purpose. A person's freedom can be taken away using satanic power. Unfortunately, it is possible for somebody to be completely overpowered by satanic forces. So the first way in which a man could lose his freedom is by spiritual power. No wonder the Bible says, Behold, I have given unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over every power of the enemy. There is something known as the power of the enemy. The power of the enemy can overpower a person. My heart goes out and I feel sorry for those who have been overpowered. They want to stop certain things. They just cannot stop. They are under an evil grip. They have been overpowered. I remember the testimony of that brother. Anytime he had something important to do, a day before it, he will have a dream. Somebody will bring him a large keg of palm wine and begin to feed him with it. And he will drink and drink and drink and drink. Up to the level that sometimes when he wakes up, he will still feel the taste of palm wine in his mouth. And any time that happens, anything he plans to do will fail. He tried reading the Psalms before sleeping. They still overpowered him. He tried pouring only water on his head. They still overpowered him. He tried marking his head with chalk and drawing the mark of the cross on the head. They still overpowered him. This is what we call removal of freedom by force. Like spiritual arm robbery. I'm praying for somebody tonight that those powers that have overpowered you in order to steal your virtue and steal your freedom before you depart from this only ground tonight they shall be buried alive 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 they shall be buried they shall be buried alive they shall be buried alive in the name of jesus this is why it is possible for somebody to be a witch and you don't know they can force a person into that kind of thing there is witchcraft by force there is familiar spirit by force you don't want to be a part of it but they have forced you into it they brought a boy here many years ago he was below 20 I felt sorry for him he just could not stop going to prostitute he, he tried his best he could not he even asked one of his friends to tie his legs to the table in the sitting room so he won't go out. He was the one that cut the rope and went. By the time one of our evangelists brought him here, he said, man of God, you must help me. As he was saying, you must help me, he was removing his buttons from his trousers and he undressed. I saw his male organ. Everything around you was filled with sauce. sauce. I said, ah. You have sauce all over this place and you are going to prostitutes? Say yes, sir. That it could not stop. That is freedom taken away by spiritual power. Spiritual power. A boy was in school. He was always first, 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 first. The same boy just went down and now began to take the last position. But the younger sister now was confessing during deliverance that they had converted his brain to sawdust they converted his brain to sawdust but medically biologically it is the brain that is still there but it is sawdust sawdust how was that possible spiritual power i pray once again for somebody that any power that has used force force to steal from you before you depart from this holy ground tonight they shall be buried alive they shall be buried alive. 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 In the name of Jesus. The second way in which freedom can be taken away or restricted is by spiritual authority. Authority represents the power of someone 
whose will and commands must be obeyed. Authority exercises the right of power to command, while power enforces the commands of authority. People obey authority because the one exercising the authority may have power to enforce it or to punish disobedience. The one exercising the authority may call on the source of authority and the power source will either enforce obedience or punish disobedience. A woman was living in a tenant kind of house. Every day she would sweep the front of her own house and throw it away and go back to her room. She sweeps the front of her room and then goes back. One day one of the women living there came out and said, I command you to be sweeping both your own front and my own front as from today. Ah, the man said, what do you mean? Am I your house? He said, I say you must sweep in the front of my room. The man said, I will not sweep it. I said, okay. He said, today, you go, no, say, woman, pass woman. That was all she said. And within the next few hours, this woman who refused to sweep began to urinate ceaselessly. She just cannot retain water again. An evil authority has been used against her. I pray for somebody as well. If there is an evil authority commanding you, you must be scattered in the name of Jesus. The third way in which freedom is taken away or restrained is by spiritual law. Law. What is law? Law is the statement of a fixed order of behavior, including the consequences of disobeying it. Spiritual law has power to restrict our freedom in anything it orders us to do or not to do. Law does not ask for our agreement or cooperation. The law claims that this is what you ought to do and you must do it. Law is prepared if necessary to penalize or punish lawbreakers. This is a serious matter. A lot of people have been controlled by satanic decrees. The decree is affecting them badly. A woman used to miscarry and she went to the native doctor and they did an egg for her and they suspended the egg in the house of the native doctor in the village and they told her immediately you fall into labor come to the village inform the native doctor he will cut the suspension the egg comes down you deliver your baby so the baby inside her womb had been subjected to a satanic law by the native doctor in the village who suspended an egg. She fell into labor and the baby refused to come out. And she began to scream, go to Baba Sosa and so in the village. That's the one suspending it. They ran to the village about two hours outside Lagos. But as they were entering the village, they saw a procession coming out of the village, carrying a coffin. They didn't bother to ask who was the coffin. They drove straight to the native doctor's house, for only to get there to find the place locked up. Where is Baba Sosa? I said, where is Baba Sosa? People came out and said, are you crazy? You didn't see the procession. They said, what procession? I said, the man has died. I said, ah, how about the egg? How about the egg? She wish egg. Could not talk. Both the baby and the woman died at the island maternity in Lagos here because there was a law guiding them and since they have not surrendered their lives to Jesus who can use a higher law to overrule their law they paid the evil price I'm praying for somebody again tonight if there is a satanic decree that has stolen from you I command that decree to scatter now in the name of Jesus 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 the fourth way in which freedom could be taken away or restrained or restricted is by personal decision you could decide to hand your freedom over to the enemy God can put you in a place of protection you could decide to jeopardize that protection by going to places the Almighty does not want you to go. If you have a golden coin in your hand, you don't sit in a canoe and you are throwing it up and down. You may lose it. If you do, it is by personal decision. You can hand over your freedom to the enemy, personal decision. 
A person can become a witch too by a personal decision. The fifth way which freedom can be taken away or restrained is by curses. A curse is an evil wish against somebody. A curse is a pronouncement to bring evil upon somebody. A curse was what came upon the hazard. The curse said, Leprous of Neman shall come upon thee and unto thy offspring. That's the power of a curse. Six way in which you could lose your freedom or it is restricted is unconscious loss. Unconscious loss. You lose it unconsciously. Unconsciously. The person thinks there is no problem, but not knowing that it's, everything is gone. Seventh way is by inheritance. You could inherit a loss of your freedom as a result of a decision taken by your ancestors. And finally, number eight, you can lose your freedom or have it restrained or restricted by evil covenants. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 14. Isaiah 28 verse 14. Isaiah 20 verse 14 to 15. Wherefore hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing sky shall pass through, shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood we have hid ourselves. There is satanic covenant. A covenant is an important secret in the Bible. God forms covenant and never breaks it. He said, my covenant will I do not break. God's final commitment to do anything is in a covenant. And once God commits himself to a covenant, there is no more that he can do. So a covenant represents a final irrevocable commitment. A covenant is like a chain binding two people. It is like a yoke binding two animals. And that covenant drags you along with that person. This is a very, very serious matter. In this passage that we have read here, we read of a people who have entered into a satanic covenant in order to gain power to rule the people and in order to protect themselves. The world is still the same. It has not changed. Men are still entering into evil, deadly covenants for just about the same reason. God has warned us against such evil covenants because it killed it. In Exodus chapter 34, Exodus 34 verse 12, Exodus 34 verse 12, Take it to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy the altars, break their images, cut down their grooves. For thou shalt worship no other God for the Lord whose name is jealous, is a jealous God. For the Lord whose name is jealous, is a jealous God. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. And thou take of their daughters unto thy son, and their daughters go a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go whoring after their gods. Here, the Bible warns that apart from practicing idolatry, you can also indirectly covenant yourself to idols by eating things sacrificed to them, or by sexual contact with the strange women who patronize these strange gods. It was a lesson Solomon learned too late. A covenant is an agreement or transaction between two parties and is legally binding. It is a primitive trade by barter, an exchange. This demon says, you sacrifice something to me and I give you this. You sleep in the graveyard for one week and I give you the weight. You go into the forest and sleep on a tree for 21 days and uh, you will have power to disappear at will. So the covenants are then formed and it's a terrible matter. I want you to hear me and hear me well. 
there are covenants that kill it. The first one of those covenants is covenants with satanic priests. Covenant with satanic priests through native doctors, juju priests, voodoo priests, marine priests, traditional healers. This is the first covenant that kill it. In Christianity, men of God, pastors, apostles, teachers, they function as representative of God to lead men into a covenant relationship with God. In the demonic world, the satanic priest also stands as an intermediary to lead people into covenant with Satan. Listen and listen to me very carefully tonight. It is not possible to go to a native doctor or go to a satanic priest and you will not enter into a covenant. It's automatic. You're merely entering into their chambers. It's an act that connects you to the powers of darkness. It's an act that says that you are surrendering yourself to their control. Just mere entry. You did not do anything. Maybe you even escorted your friend there. Mere going, you have formed a covenant. And that could be the reason why you may be having certain troubles now. I pray for such people who have gone to such places, either consciously or unconsciously, or your parents took you there and said, maybe you are not aware that the power of God will set them free tonight. Number two, there is a covenant of dark religion. Satan is a master camouflage. For every spiritual transaction, he has made his own counterfeit. So many places you call prayer houses, spiritual churches, they are all covenant houses. Shrines that are set up with the use of candle, incense, and holy water are trappings of idolatry and occultism. And there are terrible things happening all over the place that people put themselves into. The book of Jeremiah warns us that burning incense is not unto God but unto the Queen of Heaven. So apart from this kind of idolatry, when you now begin to follow an order, you don't wear shoes, you don't wear underwear, if you are menstruating, don't come to church, all the colored, colored dresses, all those things, you enter yourself into a covenant. It is a covenant that eventually kills it. Three, there is cultural covenant. Nearly all our cultures is knee deep in idolatry. Some people say they are doing New Year Festival, puberty rights, receiving of tribal marks, chieftaincy titles, age initiation, traditional dances and plays, circumcision rites. Demonic naming ceremonies where they give the baby dead rats and fish, pouring of libations. All these things don't glorify God, they glorify the devil. To be quite honest with you, much of our culture is strange and bizarre, and they have devastating effects. And we as Christians have a duty to begin to Christianize all these ceremonies we are getting ourselves involved with. Ordinary engagement now, marriage has become so serious that you wonder whether those who are operating it are Christians or children of the devil. They gather at the front of your house, they are charging people for hiring an aeroplane when they all came in a car. They have come to look for a human being, they are asking for flowers. And the Bible said the flower with the rest. We need to start to Christianize this thing. 42 this, 42 that, 71 this, this one, that one. Nobody sees that to say, who decided these figures? Drink so much of alcohol, cola nuts, bring alligator pepper, bring walking stick, bring television. Strange, bizarre. We should begin to Christianize them. It's a very serious matter. After my father had gone to be with the Lord, the first marriage we did with the family, I was the most senior, so I was in charge. The engagement ceremony took one hour. Where are you from? You are the family of the husband to be. You sit here. 
Where are you from? Family of the wife to be sit here. What did you come here to do? You came here to marry this person. Thank you very much. Let us pray. So I prayed the opening prayer. And we sang the first hymn there. And after the first hymn, what did you bring? Hey, we brought here, we brought this your brother. Where are they? So it's downstairs. Can you please bring it up? They brought it up. I said, put everything inside the kitchen. So they put everything inside the kitchen. And we said, okay. We started by 11 o'clock. By 4 o'clock, we had finished everything. So I cannot understand why you want to bury the dead for one week. And after the better, you are borrowing money to eat. God will deliver us. <laughs> Number four, covenant that killed. Blood covenant. This is the highest form of killing covenant in this spiritual realm. Because life is in the blood. All those incisions, cuttings received from native doctors, which normally goes with demonic cream, demonic powder being rubbed into the wound all the female circumcision they are all demonic covenants dedicating your womanhood dedicating your life to idols a man invited an Aosa Malam to do circumcision for his child and the man cut off the first thing and the man was afraid that he would drop the thing somewhere but he found that the teeth of the man was moving he had eaten it the covenant is formed between the man and the malam. Close your eyes. Covenants of darkness of my father's house. In the name of Jesus. There is somebody needs to pray. Jesus, let me pray. The most serious of this covenant is love covenants between couples. Boyfriend, girlfriend, cut their fingers, put the blood into a container. The man to cut the stone, put the blood in the container. Sometimes they add alcohol, sometimes it's ordinary water. Then they will share in drinking each other's blood that they will never leave each other. A terrible covenant indeed. We have had cases in Mountain of Fire where people have prayed and prayed until they were perplexed and didn't know what was going on. Not knowing that the sister had formed a blood covenant with his former boyfriend who now died in an accident. And he had formed a covenant that they will never leave each other. She will never marry somebody else. And that's the covenant that one formed too. This is a very serious matter. There is even a place in this country the village, all of them cut off the little finger of their left hand. They are initiated into a type of coverage. Every incision, cut in the body, marks on the body, they are all covenants who form with some spirits. And they are seriously binding on your destiny. A blood covenant can decide your destiny forever. It is a covenant that kill it. A covenant that kill it. I pray that the Lord will deliver us and help his people. Remember the story of that sister I told you many years back. Her mother-in-law came to visit. She went to work. As she was driving to work, something said, go back home. Go back home. She didn't know why, but she went back home. When she got home, something said to her, your main strap pad that you threw into the dustbin, look for it. She looked for it. She could not find it again. <sighs> she looked for it. She took the dustbin, put it on the floor, looked at everything one by one. Then it was only my mother was in the house. I said, Mommy, did you take my menstrual pad? You must say, No, no. Say, Mama, tell me the truth. I will go and search your room. So she headed towards her room. Uh, the woman I said, Okay, 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 okay. I took it. So she said, Can I have it back? When the mother-in-law brought back the menstrual pad, the blood there was no longer there. 
the woman actually licked the blood dry. Can you raise up your right hand below? Can you shout this loud and clear? Confidence that killeth. My life is not your candidate. Yeah! In the name of Jesus. Something is happening tonight. Something is happening tonight. Open your mouth, beloved. This is a revival hour. Masaka tenda ya boshente raba kaya ba. Barika sepela kaya boko shente raba kaya ba. Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Ah, making progress. The fifth one is inherited covenant. If your forefathers worship idols, the devil makes sure that whenever sacrifices are offered to him for protection, for power, security, or any other thing, it will make sure that they also mention their generations to come. So it cages them into that evil covenant. The Bible says, Abraham, Levi, that was not yet born, paid tithes in the loins of Abraham. So it's possible that your parents paid tithes on your behalf. And that covenant will be binding. You may find yourself now occupying evil six dancing around with collective captivity six six covenant that kill it occultic covenant those who are involved in cult society occultic society they always form a covenant before becoming a member they swear an oath of allegiance usually with their blood promising that they will never leave the group if they now get born again and they want to leave the covenant to say sorry we are still here and they give the people a lot of hassle the seventh covenant that kill it is sexual covenant sexual covenant in first corinthians chapter 6 verse 16 in case you are a young person and you are saying that well i'm going to have fun i want to have fun but it's nothing like having fun you are just killing yourself slowly, if not quickly. Look at what the Bible says. First Corinthians 6 16. First Corinthians 6 16. Say, What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a lot is one body? For two, said he, shall be one flesh. There is a divine mathematics in every sexual intercourse. Two becomes one. The divine mathematics for sexual intercourse is that two is equal to one. In sexual intercourse, a type of transfer occurs. That which is in you is transferred into your sexual partner. That which is your sexual partner is transferred into you. Always, all sexual intercourse is like that. It is a form of bonding. It doesn't matter whether you use ten condoms, the transfer will still take place. The demons have no respect for your condoms. By your coming together, you are saying, What I have, I give to you. What you have, I take. That's what you're saying. It goes beyond just giving of your body. Liquid body fluids are transferred, and spirit entities are also transferred. It is an established fact that it's very easy to spread disease through sexual intercourse. The quickest way to transfer demons is through sexual intercourse. When two rivers of different colored waters converge to form one river, the newly formed river will be a mixture of the two colors. Red mixed with white will produce pink every time. What are we saying here? A woman whose life has been dedicated as a marine princess from birth and has been infiltrated with marine spirits, that woman is carrying nothing less than 100 demons. 
if she has sexual intercourse with a man who is previously clean, she's going to transfer part of her demons to that man and the man will become polluted right from that day. Out of the hundred demons, maybe the man only did one or two hours, he gets 50. This man who has now collected 50 from somebody now sleeps with another woman who is clean. He will transfer maybe 25 to that woman. And that way the pollution just continues. That's why the more sexual partners you are, the more fragmented you are, the more divided you are inside. So when somebody is sexually loose, you contact plenty of covenants. And you become what you call a demon barrel. You collect demons all over town. That's why if a woman, you are married to a man who is very loose, you need to be anointing yourself and be praying regularly because after he had collected his demons from the street, he's coming to transfer some to your body. Eight, there is food and drink covenant. Another easy way to transfer evil things is through food and drink. A lot of people eat food sacrificed to idols. Today in our nursery schools, a great number of children have been initiated into witchcraft through eating of sweet banana, granite, other items, innocently collected from agents of darkness. And we should pray very hard against this. The devil has vowed that within the next few years, he must have a witch or wizard representing him in every home. So we need to pray and break off all this bizarre and evil covenant. The night covenant is dream covenant. A lot of people enter into covenants in the dream without knowing. Marriages in the dream, feeding in the dream, initiated in the dream. I pray that any dream covenant warring anyone will be buried alive in the name of Jesus. Will be buried alive in the name of Jesus. The tenth covenant is geographical covenant. There are certain places or locations where particular demons are known to reside. Certain streams, trees, rocks, rivers are known to be dedicated to certain spirits. If somebody goes to such places, he forms a covenant with them. There are territorial spirits. There are territorial demons. I pray that anyone involved in geographical covenants will be set free in the name of Jesus. Eleven is covenant through cosmetics. Thank God for those who invented cosmetics. They gave it another name called makeup. Makeup. And it, it is not up to standard. So let's use paint and something to make it up. If your beauty is from the Lord, you don't need a makeup. In the Bible, God prepared a special anointing oil to be used only by the priests in consecrating them to office. you find that in Exodus 30. Satan always counterfeits the original. It is no secret that many cults use particular perfumes and oil. Many secret societies offer perfumes, oil, and creams and powder which can be rubbed onto the body. Some even prepare bathing soaps. Apart from this, beloved, some of the cosmetics being sold in our human market are directly prepared from the demonic kingdom. I can confirm that for you today. It may shock you to even know that some of the leading cosmetic companies in the world are owned by satanists. The reason you are having bad luck may not be unconnected to the danger lipstick you have in your bag that you are using to color your lips red as if that is a problem. And so when the angels of God see you, they think you are a blood drinker because your lips are red. Your ignorance, or you say, I don't believe that they do it in America, does not save you from the covenant. These are those young, young boys now, and girls now, who will put their trousers in the middle of their bum bum, without knowing the origin. But the origin of those, the trousers on the bum bum, is because in those days, prisoners were committing suicide using their belts. They would tie it on their neck and commit suicide. So because of that, when they put them in prison, they take away their belts. And their trousers will now sag to the bottom. So young people have now copied it as a star. Ignorance. Twelve. There is covenant through evil fashion. That is, jewelries, clothes, hairstyle. Here again, 
you discover that the Israelites, God's own people, they have their own particular mode and style of dressing. The priests too have their own gowns, the way they dress. Oboni people, the cult members, they have their own costume, complete with their paraphernalia. Likewise, all the cults, they have their own dressing. When you wear those Oboni dresses, you wear cult dresses, you give access to their demons to operate in your life. When you wear clothes dedicated to idol or clothes that expose your nakedness, you give access to demons to enter into your life. All forms of jewelry, they have their own connotation with idolatry. And they have practically destroyed the spiritual life of so many sisters. And this is part of the reason why prophetesses among sisters, they are getting scars and scars and scars now. Scars and scars because many of the sisters are polluting themselves with all these things. I pray that the Lord will open our understanding and will understand these things. There are covenants that kill it and they have killed so many already. We are going to stop here. Tonight, I want you to understand that Jesus has a better covenant for us. It is a tragedy when we abandon the covenant of the Lord Jesus Christ and we go into these covenants that kill it. Tonight, we have prayers to pray. Acidic prayers to break this evil covenant. All eyes closed. But you see, if you are not born again, if you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, better do so by raising up your right hand and see what I'm going to say after. Say, so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you tonight. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Right there where you are, you now pray these aggressive prayers. These prayers are prayers that have helped millions all over the world. It has helped so many people to be free from stubborn attacks. When you are praying and a demon says, I am not going out. When the demon is saying, I will not leave him, I will not leave her. What the demon is telling you? That there is a covenant keeping it there. You have not broken that one. So with a loud voice, say, by the power in the blood of Jesus. Can you shout his loud?
Jesus name we pray Please, I want you to be more aggressive. Don't stand there like that. Make sure your body, your soul, and your spirit are playing. Covenant of untimely death. Pray in the name of Jesus. That's right. Jesus, then we pray. I want you to double your aggression. Covenant of grace to grass. Can you shout this loud? Pray in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, open your mouth. This is the revival hour. Masepo Kataka. Pata Sentende Kaya. Yes. Something is happening over there. Jesus name we pray. Dark covenants of my father's house. The time is up. Dark. In the name of Jesus. Jesus name we pray. Father, I thank you for your children who have joined this program. Let your hand be upon them for good. Mobilize heaven to help their lives. By the time we meet again, let them become greater bundles of testimonies. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 And let us share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Seven glorious hallelujah. Let's go. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Come be a part of the MFM International Headquarters social media family by liking us on Facebook, following us on Instagram, and don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and click the notification bell. To be fully abreast of our programs, go follow, like, and subscribe now. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Surely the Lord is here. Prayer Compass. Prayers to discover your treasure. Prayers to fulfill your destiny's dream. Praying against the spirit of the valley. These are the books for the Eagle Owl Queens for the month of September. Get any of these books from www.mfminkbookshop.com or any bookshop near you. Study and win cash prizes from 50,000 Naira and more. Quiz Potter will open 2nd of October 2022. 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. for the September Quiz Exercise at www.mfmeaglehour.com Remember, readers are leaders. The Eagle Hour Book Quiz. Be the best and be the best. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Surely, the Lord is here. 
Position for Marriage is the theme for the Gen 20 September edition of the Marriage Congratulation Program that will take place on the 24th of September 2022. This gathering of singles will be held live. Dr. D.K. Olukoya, the General Overseer of the Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries Worldwide will be ministering. From the MFM International Headquarters, Lagos, Nigeria, this program will be made available on our social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, 0800-WAT. The Gen 20 Singles Marital Congratulation Program, Position for Marriage. Come be a part of this event for a new chapter in your life. Jesus is waiting for you. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, surely the Lord is here.